Uh, today, uh, we would like to continue our series of the goodness of God. Amen. God's goodness. We've heard several messages where we've observed God's goodness in his protection. Also, we've been able to observe God's goodness in his provision. And today, uh, on this part three of this series of God's goodness, I would like us to observe God's goodness as the one who gives lives, gives life, he gives life. And before we begin, I would like us to pray. And I, I would like you to join me in prayer. And let's, let's ask God to speak to our hearts, speak to our, our spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for this celebration we're having this morning in which, Lord, we have united to encounter your love, to encounter your presence, to worship you, to, to lift you up, Lord, to just express our love and our gratitude towards you and lift our offering of praise and worship to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this gathering. We thank you for this celebration. Father, in this moment, we also pray that you may speak to us, that you may reveal your word to us, that your word may speak to our lives, speak to our soul, our spirit, that your, your word, Lord, may edify us, that may your, your word may build us up, Lord, that your word, Lord, may embolden our faith, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that your word may minister according to the need of every heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So, as I was saying today, we will be observing God's goodness because he gives life. And this can be traced back to Genesis 2-7 where it says, then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground. And he breathed life into, he breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life. And the man became a living being. From the moment of the beginning of time and of the history, the beginning of the journey of mankind, we see that life was given to mankind by God. Not just mankind, but, or human beings, but prior to this, God gave life to earth where he created animals, he created plants, forests, you know, the word of God says that at the beginning, the water was still stagnant. But as he formed the earth, life began to take place and take its place on earth. You know, anybody here enjoy celebrating birthdays? or their own birthday, get excited when their birthday's coming up, you know, start making plans, talking about, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, or I want this, I want that, or I would like this to happen on my birthday, and start making birthday plans. You know, it's really interesting how we really have a a celebration of life every time we celebrate a birthday. I was at a birthday party last night, um, a private intimate gathering with my family, uh, my cousin, it was his birthday and, and you know, 
it was a really meaningful day in, in gathering um, as he expressed his um, thoughts and feelings with the family he he broke out in tears just just reminiscing of all the hardships he's been through uh, challenges and yet he's been given an opportunity to celebrate another year of life it's a beautiful thing um, and for all the parents here isn't it a beautiful thing when you reminisce on the day that child was born uh, sure for many um, there's also reminiscing of pain and and really hardship and you know depending on the process of the pregnancy and everything but if you ask every mom and every father uh, or most fathers and most moms um, don't want to generalize but most when they think about that first embrace of that child when they do that skin to skin uh, first touch uh, which is not just meaningful for the child but for the parent but also it sends a tremendous message of the formation of attachment and security for that child as he's this he or she is discovering this new world it is a beautiful thing and we're reminded of this every time we hear a baby's born every time we hear that someone's celebrating a birthday it's a reminder of life that we're celebrating life that we're celebrating that God continues to give life. I will remind you that if God wants to stop giving life today, then there will be no more birthday parties to celebrate. There will be no more uh, baby births, welcome homes to, to celebrate. Because God is the, and we see his goodness as the provider of life, the one who gives life. But see, uh, God doesn't just give life to mankind, but in, if you read this in your own, in your own time, in 1 Timothy 6, 13, the Apostle Paul says that, you know, God gives life to everything. Everything, everything around us is provided life by God. In other words, I just want to start with saying that God, our God, is the God who gives life. But it don't just stop there, my family. Because through Jesus Christ, we receive life and life in full. Life in abundance. John 10.10 10 says the following. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. This thief, this thief that, the, that, 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 that Jesus was talking about is, is the enemy, is the devil. But, but then he says, I, Jesus Christ, have come that they may have life and have it in to the full. In other words, have it in abundance. You see, God didn't intend us just to have air to breathe and to say, hey, we're living. But God wants us to enjoy life and to really live life at its fullest in abundance. But that can only happen through Jesus Christ, the one who gives life. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, listen to this, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that beautiful? You know, once again, I want to tell you that Many people celebrate birthdays, right? And I was at a birthday party yesterday or it's a birthday celebration yesterday. But a lot of people here may, be, may have uh, been brought up in church, but maybe other people um, were not brought up in church. Maybe some people encountered Christ at a certain time in their lives. Or maybe somebody was brought up in church, then uh, kind of shifted on their own path and then they returned, you know, to, 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 the, to the one who gives life and life in full. So I want to tell you that we, as Christians, don't just celebrate a birthday the day we were born. 
but we celebrate the birthday in which we encountered Christ, the one who gives life. We celebrate two birthdays. We celebrate two celebrations. You know, we, we have two parties going, you know what I mean? Because we remember not only the day we were born, but we also remember the day we encountered Christ. And the day we know that our sins, our wages of sin were, were paid for through the gift of that eternal life, that salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. I would like us to observe some of the ways that we can see God's goodness being manifested, how he shows his goodness by giving his life. First, first one, God shows his goodness giving us spiritual life, giving us life spiritually speaking through Jesus Christ. John 1 verses 1 through 4 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. This is talking about Jesus Christ. Through Him, all things were made. This is. I just wanted to pause here because I put this verse in here to show you that from the beginning of time, Jesus was already giving life. And then it continues to say, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. If we look at John chapter 8, verse 12, look at this word. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but he will have the light of life. I'm just, I mean, I don't want to add to this because the word is so clear and it speaks for itself that Jesus is the light of life. That Jesus is the provider of life. And I'm not just talking about you being born. He gave you that life. He gave you that birthday, but he also has given us abundant life a life in which we may live in a world of darkness but we don't live in the dark we live in light because jesus lives in us a famous verse is john 4 6 4, excuse me john 14 6 and that verse says i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me again jesus reminding us that life comes through him, that life is issued by him. And not just life for us to breathe, but also life to live a life of abundance and in full. You see, there's many people that live a life and it's just that, they just, they just breathe. And I wanna tell you, that may not be a really pleasant way of living. But when you live a life where not only you breathe, but when you breathe, you worship. But when you breathe, you praise. But when you breathe, you recognize that the one giving you that oxygen to inhale and exhale is Jesus Christ. When, when, you, when you live a life in which you know that although you may walk in the world of darkness, but you have the light of Christ in you, shining that light for yourself and for others around you. When you have life, where you see the colors of, uh, 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 of, of the spring and the winter, and you able to reminisce and see the beauty of creation and say, this was provided for me by the one who gives life. When you're able to look back and say, man, I was lost in sin. I was lost in darkness. I was, my life was, was condemned to hell, but, but through Christ Jesus, I'm able to live a life in full, a, a, a live a life of righteousness, not because I am righteous, but because the one who lives in me is guiding me to live a life of righteousness. My brothers, my sisters, I'm telling you, living a life of hope, you know, Ecclesiastes says that, that if there is life, there is hope. You see, those that have Christ have hope. Those that have 
have Christ, have hope that even though they may be going through a struggle, Christ is on his way. Christ is right there on the, on, by their side, making a path out of, out of a place that there's no more, no more ways. I love my brother Rigo singing that song. He said he may, you know, we have a God that makes highways, you know, out of the seas. I'm talking about a, a God that gives us life. It gives us in, a pleasure to enjoy life. You know, just to reassert this point, Colossians 2, 13 through 15 says, when you were dead in your sins and in the incircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. Ooh, God made us alive in Christ, with Christ. He forgave us of all our sins, have, having canceled the charge of our legal uh, in depthness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it on the cross, to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. I'm talking about living a life where I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm talking about living a life where I'm no longer chained to depression. I'm talking about living a life where I'm no longer shackled to anxiety. I'm talking about living a life where I'm no longer shackled and chained to my past, incarcerated to my history, you know, imprisoned by my negative experiences. But I'm talking about living a life in which God has turned whatever shame there was, like my brother Regal was singing, into glory, hallelujah, into a testimony of his goodness, of his provision, his protection. I'm talking about living a life that is not dull, but a life that is exciting, a life that is in, of enjoyment, a, a life that, that is full of adventure. That is the life that God provides us. Another way we see God's goodness manifested through, his, uh, through giving life is because he gives us the bread of life. You know, John 6, 51 says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I want to remind you that when the people of Israel were walking through the desert, manna came from heaven every day. But that was only for the people of Israel. But when Christ came, when Christ came from heaven, he is a representation of a substance greater than manna. Because it's not only for the Israelites, but Christ came down from heaven as manna, as bread of life for everyone. It's not an exclusive thing. He's not in Christ. Is, as the bread of life, he's not, he's not exclusive for a group of people, but he is there for everyone that may want to partake. And if you continue reading in that same chapter, let's look at verse 58. And it says, this is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Ooh, I don't know about you, but when I read that word, that word gives me peace. That word gives me hope. And that word fills me of more life, knowing that the bread that the Israelites ate was a bread that was just to, 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 to satisfy the need of their hunger, you know, of, of, of their physical need. But Christ not only satisfies my physical needs, but he satisfies my spiritual needs. And therefore, as I partake and eat the bread of life, Christ says, hey, this is different from the manna from before. This is different from the bread that came from heaven before. I, in, 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 in diff, I'm so different from that one because I will give you an opportunity to live eternity, in eternity, within eternity. Listen to that word, eternity. As his children, 
we do not die, but we sleep because we will live in Christ Jesus forever. Another way we see, and, and you, someone may say, you know, and, and what is that? Well, you know, when you, when you eat the bread of life, that means when you take on his word, when you eat his word, you eating that bread of life. When you eating, when, when you living out that Christian lifestyle, you, 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 you diving in that bread of life. The third way we see God's goodness manifested is he gives us living waters, living water. I don't know if you're catching the theme here, but he's the God that gives life, bread of life and living water. John 4, 10 says, uh, uh, Christ encountered a, a, a woman, a Samaritan woman, and he says, if you knew the gift of God and who is uh, who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. This is this as this woman was pouring out water from the well, Jesus asked her for, for, for some water and she starts questioning, hey, but you don't have nothing to pull out the water with. And Jesus says to her, man, if, woman, if you only knew who was asking, you would ask me for water and I will give you living water. And somebody may say, well, well, what is that living water? Well, let's see what that living water is. John 7, um, 37, verse 38. says, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. You know what? how I know that God is good and how I see his goodness manifested because he gives us living water. And you know what living water is? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. My brother Regal was leading us in this final um, worship song. And he said, spirit of God fall fresh on us. Spirit of God fall fresh on us. You know, I don't know about you, but when we receive the Holy Spirit, man. It's something special that sparks inside of our soul that we can't describe. It's like a roaring river inside of us, flowing with life. And that is provided by the one who gives life, Jesus Christ. Another way we can see God's goodness manifested is that he gives us eternal life. First John 5, 11 through 12 says, and this is the testimony God has given us eternal life and that, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Listen to that. Whoever has the son has life. Anybody here got life? Anybody here has the son? That means you got life. And listen to this, whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. If we continue to read in another scripture, James 1.12, look what this word says. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. You see, again, uh, I just, I don't wanna bring this in to bring in a negative uh, aspect, but I just wanna be real with you. Just in the United States, over half a million people have passed within this pandemic, over half a million people. Funerals are generally sad events, sad ceremonies. But have you ever been to a funeral service when they celebrate life? Where, where someone is celebrated for persevering all the way to the end? Have you ever been to a 
celebration of life through a funeral service where that person has left the legacy of honoring God, of living out a Christian life. I'm gonna tell you something. Those two funerals are night and day in difference, big difference. I've been to many funerals and I've been to those where, you know, we pray for that person that God may have had mercy on them. No one knows who's being saved or not, but we know by testimony, amen, what that person has done and has, what that person has, how that person has lived out their life. And we, we have a person that the spirit of God gives testimony that this person has been, you know, uh, living out a Christian lifestyle to the fullest. Man, it's, you have, you have emotion, emotional, uh, 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 like a mixture of emotions, you know, where you feel sad because this person has gone, but then you feel peace and you feel excitement for this person because guess what? They've been crowned with the crown of life because they persevered to the end. Again, I tell you that those that have Christ Jesus, as we read earlier in 1 John 5, 11 and 12, if you have, if you have uh, Jesus Christ in your life, you have life and you have it in abundance. You have a ticket to eternity. That is a beautiful thing. I'm gonna wrap up by these uh, two things. How can I maintain myself in this abundant life? Well, it's simple. Somebody asked this question to Jesus. You look at this in Luke chapter 10. On an occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And the person answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus replied, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Do this and you will live. Let's not complicate things, my brothers and my sisters. Let, let, let's not complicate things, family. Let's keep it simple. Jesus says, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, or your strength and love your neighbor, love your, your brother as, your, as yourself, as you love yourself. Do this and you will live. I say this to you today. Let us love God with all our heart, with all our strength. Let us love God with all our mind, all our soul. Let us give God everything we got every day for we do not know when our time is gonna end on this planet, but let us live life to the fullest. Let us show others this love. Let us show others this, this, this light, this life. Let us love ourselves and let us love others and our neighbors. And guess what? We will live, we will live we will live. And finally, stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. In the way you think, in the way you feel, in the way you act. I'm gonna repeat this one more time. Somebody asked me, how do I maintain myself in this abundant life? Number one, love God with all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Amen. All your heart. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And number two, stay busy. 
stay busy the way you think the way you feel and the way you act in the spirit stay busy in the spirit stay busy in the spirit i didn't ask you to go add another bunch of to-do lists on your list that's not what i mean by staying busy i'm telling you stay busy in your mind connected to the spirit stay busy in your heart the way you feel about god how you expressing yourself to god in worship your daily life as a life of worship stay busy the way you act that it may be according to the spirit with your family with your children with your spouse with your family with your with your mom your dad your your co-workers your 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 neighbors stay busy in the spirit Because Romans 8, 6 says the following. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. I'm going to repeat this one more time. And I'm going to ask my brother, my brother Rigo, if, if it's possible, brother, if you could just sing that chorus part where it says, Spirit of God, fall fresh fall fresh on us. And I'm repeat this verse. Romans 8, 6 says, the mind governed by the flesh is death. In other words, the mind that stays busy in the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit, the mind that stays busy by the spirit is life and peace. I want to remind you, that we have a God, a God that gives us life and gives us life in abundance. A good God that gives us life and life in abundance. Let us sing this worship song. Let us sing this chorus. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us as we pray and we ask God to fill us with his spirit that those living waters may may continue to flow inside our heart and we may continue to take upon that bread of life that we may continue to strive to earn that crown of life that we may continue to hold on to Jesus who made his life in our hearts rivers flow Lord. like living water in our hearts may your rivers flow Lord. may your rivers flow Lord. rivers of living water Lord. I pray for everyone gathered Lord. Spirit of God flow in a mighty way Spirit of God manifest your glory thank you for the life you give us Lord for the exciting life that you give us, Lord. A life in full, a life in abundance. A life that honors you, Lord. Manifest your glory, Lord. I pray that your spirit may continue to fill us with that life that light of life that your word may continue to provide us that strength we need as we take on that bread of life that your spirit Lord may continue to be poured down in our hearts Lord. fall fresh on us Lord we need your presence Lord to continue to live a life abundance a life that blesses all those around us Lord. 
provision we've seen and we've heard about God's protection and today we have been able to hear his word about him being the one who gives life amen and life in abundance life in full 